Ghouls fans, welcome in to another great episode of the Around the Horns podcast. I'm your host, Tristan, joined as always by my main man, Mario. Mario, welcome in. Uh, an exciting show on store today. You know, the Bulls all this past few weeks have had a different kind of schedule. Yeah. And so in staying with that theme, we kind of have a different kind of set up today for our uh, podcast. Yeah, normally we kick it off in the first period with a big wig for the Bulls. This week we're kicking it off with a big wig for one of the sponsors of the Bulls, uh, the president and CEO of a great organization here in town, Tara Lowry, joining us from Sangre de Cristo Community Care. Tara, thank you. Welcome in. Absolutely. I'm very happy to be here. So this is the first of hopefully what will turn into a bit of a series here on the Around the Horns podcast, just a little bit of a, a peek behind the door of, of the support that's gone on for the Pueblo Bulls. And this was a new team, came into town last year, Sangre, uh, not a new organization, 30 plus years in the community doing what you do. Uh, and they come to you and say, help us out, show your support. And you didn't hesitate in year one for the team. Absolutely. You know, Sangre is Pueblo grown. Uh, we started from nothing here in Pueblo, and we've grown into an organization that has lots of employees, and we do good things around the community. And when we heard about the team coming to town, we knew it would be good for Pueblo, and we wanted to be part of that. Yeah, and that's, I think, what makes it so great as well. Sangre, a nonprofit, so understanding the support that organizations can uh, turn around and now give back. Uh, and, and I know you are a big fan of the game as well, so now to see uh, an organization you're so proud of get run into often by uh, skaters as they get kind of barreled into the glass there. Does <laughs> right. it hurt your feelings or is that cool to <laughs> no, finally see it? No, it's awesome. It? Absolutely awesome. I have to say this year a little different because of fans not being able to get in with the COVID uh, pandemic, but they did do something kind of different this year and did the cutouts. And you are actually one of the cutouts there, too. How does that feel? So I bought a cutout, and I bought a cutout for my dog. So uh, we're both sitting in the stands every single week, cheering from afar, but we're there. It's awesome. Uh, another cool thing as well that uh, for listeners of the show, prospective supporters as well, Bulls do a great job of taking care of the sponsors, too. Uh, and, and something Songray was able to do last night or last year uh, was bring the whole crew out, do a Sangre night. There were bells, uh, cowbells given out to everybody with the Sangre brand on it. You dropped the puck um, it, as kind of that employee appreciation and that community gathering aspect. How cool is it to know that you've got that opportunity right in your backyard? I know, it's amazing. You know, we used to do this similar thing up in Carter Springs. We would take everyone to a baseball game. Uh, and now we can do this right here in Pueblo. And the our staff just loved it. Uh, as soon as the season was getting ready, to start. Of course, COVID changed things, but people were already saying, I want to go to the games. Are we going to do another Sangre night? That was so much fun. I'm bringing my kids. I'm bringing my grandkids. It was just great excitement. Wonderful time. And so hopefully things will alleviate and that'll be something that is available in the future. But uh, kind of at every step along the road, not just taking care of their sponsors by giving them that kind of opportunity, but the team itself really steps up and helps out when needed. Last year, I know Sangre hosts an event uh, called the Silver Queen Pageant. Yes. And again, when that was in person, a bunch of Bulls players came. Coaches, GMs, and players all came and helped escort those ladies. It, that's got to feel good as well. Knowing it was that wonderful. You're supporting to such a good Absolutely. organization. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, the players were there, and the all the little ladies from the facilities were checking them out, and <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about how handsome their escorts were. So it it was a great time. If for a lot of those guys too, I'm sure they were smiling with their mouth closed. The people yeah. in the pageant didn't want to see all the broken teeth, but uh, still handsome <laughs> under the suits and ties. They get they get some good dental work out too. So we'll talk to one of those sponsors at one point too for yeah. the dentistry. So. Absolutely, we will. So I just want to ask you a little bit more about now on ice because as more of a fan than just more of a sponsor as well I know you've gone to a few of the games and yes. keeping up with what the team is doing this year still in first place in their division yeah uh, the Bulls are exciting this year I know it is it's you know we're all there in spirit with them every game and it's so hard not to be there because uh, we were looking so forward to being there but you know I, we, I literally sometimes if I don't have access to anything else I watch Instagram and get the score updates and and comment on those and and keep involved that way uh, they're doing such an amazing job this year and you've got two plants on the inside as well Mario or I will right. uh, just give you some updates if everything's come across <laughs> the ticker we'll make sure you know I'll the send score. you a text. Uh, well, 
Uh, I just want to ask you one more question before you get out. If there are other organizations out there or people that are just kind of uh, thinking about ways to sponsor, you always want to be a part of sponsoring something that's good and going to be around for a while. Uh, knowing that Sangre's done it the last couple of years, and uh, if you've got words of advice or kind of a bit of encouragement as to why you've chosen to do it and why you'll continue to. You know, I think that um, it's important that we take care of Pueblo because the people of Pueblo take care of all of us. And so we want to be a part of things that are good for Pueblo. This team is good for Pueblo. Uh, it's it's a great feel when you go to the games, and it's, it's wonderful to have a team that we can say this is Pueblo's team, and they're awesome. So it, it's a win-win. So if there are are some businesses out there that uh, want to do something that's good for Pueblo, they should really consider sponsoring the Bulls. We're very happy we've done it. And I think before we go, we should ask you, you know, put a little plug in for Sangre. Tell the the viewers and listeners what you're all about. Absolutely. So Sangre started as Sangre de Cristo Hospice in 1985, and we started providing end-of-life care to the Pueblo community. Uh, Fast forward now, 35 years later, we provide hospice services, palliative services. Uh, we also have a home health agency, and we cover 22,000 square miles of Southern Colorado. So we really meet the needs of the people, and we want to take care of people in their homes. We believe that people want to be home, and we want to help keep them there. So we provide the services to do that. Yeah, and and I, we are a product of the Pueblo community taking care of its own. I and we are so say, appreciative of that. A mission-driven organization as well. You talk about the nonprofit mission to do this. Uh, even for the folks that don't normally get that kind of care, Sangre has no problem stepping in and making no. sure they're taken care of. That's so right. If someone doesn't have can. insurance, doesn't have insurance that maybe covers the, the, the care that they need, they just need to call us because we will take care of people. And for a lot of Bulls fans looking to get involved as well as a nonprofit, that means you have volunteers that help out with a lot of stuff. Absolutely, you do. we we need volunteers. Uh, we have all sorts of jobs for people to do. So if you got a few extra hours, uh, give us a call. Our number is seven one nine five four two zero zero three two. If you've got time to listen to the Around the Horns podcast, you've got time to give to a worthwhile Absolutely. organization. I just want to thank Tara Lowry, President and CEO of Sangre de Cristo Community Care, again for stopping by to talk on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Bulls fans don't go anywhere we're gonna still talk hockey we've got a couple of great guests lined up uh, don't go anywhere second period just around the corner right here on the official podcast of the Pueblo Bulls Bulls fans welcome back second period time here on the around the horns podcast joined now by a new face to the team just a couple of weeks in uh, and making a big impact already by big I mean six seven frame big defenseman Tanner Glasser joining us uh, thanks for taking some time to chat with us yeah week. no problem I'm glad to be here well welcome to the Bulls first and foremost for some of the folks that have been uh, following along all season a new face to the locker room two weeks on the team uh, and first real big time action this last weekend is that correct yeah that's correct and so when you made your way here, where were you coming from? Were you playing just before making it into Pueblo? I was not playing. I was just working for a tree service in Minnesota. That's where I'm from is Minnesota. So, And uh, you've got playing background. Yeah, I'm assuming they didn't just take you off the truck and say, hey, you know how to skate? Let's make this thing happen. Yeah, I've played up in uh, Canada for the past two years um, in the MJHL. And, uh, yeah, I couldn't get back into Canada because of COVID. So I'm now in Pueblo. So now that you're here, you know, you, you, you came in. Uh, I'm sure they told you about our fan support that we have here. Obviously, we don't have that. But what's been your initial reaction to, to Pueblo and, and the support that you've, you've found here in town? Yeah, the support is great. Uh, they're like PBR, working out place, and uh, um, the cryo uh, therapy that we've gotten and the doctors just everything's been great, resources and everything like that. It's, it's amazing. And what about joining a first place team as well? That doesn't have to hurt. I mean, you come into a team that's uh, poised for a deep playoff run last year, obviously sitting atop the division this year. Uh, you get to come in and make a big impact on a team that's pretty darn good around you. How's that adjustment period been for you? Yeah, it's pretty nice coming in, uh, knowing that guys are, know what the guys want. And uh, yeah, it's, it's always good coming in on a good team. So that's nice. Has there been a guy that's kind of, uh, said, hey, here's the cheat sheet, the immediate way to get in here. I know guys play their own game and do things a little bit differently. Has there been that guy that said, hey, yeah, come on? Yeah, um, my roommate Gavin, he's been pretty good about it, and uh, Captain Wyatt too, so they've been really helpful about all that stuff. Uh, another question just as far as somebody that has maybe stepped in. Have uh, 
I'm going to break a wall down here. Have you thought about throwing Caleb Ross on your shoulders and just creating like <laughs> Super Defender and just trying a really extra long jersey on and yeah, nobody that, would ever know? That would work like in the movies where the super long trench coat and stuff. <laughs> Listen, I just had to ask. <laughs> yeah. It's quite a visual, though, I yeah. can say. Yeah. yeah. So now, Tanner, since you've been here, you've got on the ice and you've taken, if the, if the folks watching at home can see, you got some, some nicks and cuts there. Yeah, I got a few. Uh, last Friday... Brock uh, high stick me in pregame skate. I had to get six stitches. So, so welcome to the team. That's yeah. how they haze you. Yeah, that, well, just welcome so you to know, the team. We will cut you. <laughs> uh, disclaimer: <laughs> Nobody in the studio will cut you. We cannot speak for anybody outside of these four walls, but we'll try not to. We will. Uh, another question I've got for you is, uh, looking forward, you've got a couple more big series coming up, and obviously a, a tough weekend under the belt as you were kind of thrown into uh, some starting duties and some heavy minutes, but uh, knowing what this team is capable of over the last couple of weeks here trying to make a big impact, what are you trying to accomplish? Uh, I'm just trying to play my best defensive game and hopefully stay out of the box and play all three games this weekend. So. It'd be a big accomplishment. Yeah. I know uh, yeah. it, it's tough too. We've talked with coaches and players in the past as well. This is a, a new league for a lot of these guys. I don't know exactly what the rules were in the league you were playing uh, previously, but they're a little bit more strict on the penalties. There's obviously no fighting, and uh, that's going to be something that is an adjustment for some folks. Do you feel like uh, it's going to be a steep lear learning curve, or was it this one time? Okay, I got my fists out. Uh, adjustment has been made. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but. Uh, um I just have to control my temper a little bit, and just that's how it's got to be. So, yeah, we heard uh, backstage that if there's uh, another fight this weekend, Mario is actually going to be your next <laughs> opponent. And so, uh, I'll ready. let you know two things: he's a black belt in karate, golden oh, glove boxer in his former life. So probably not a guy. You yeah, know. <laughs> I, I want to tangle with him. So now you're here in Pueblo. Haven't been here a real long time, and we always ask people about you know. What's their favorite thing about uh, eating here in Pueblo? Um, do you have a place that is kind of your favorite? Uh, I'd have to say Carrie's Kitchen. Uh, Carrie is my billet mom, so she makes really good food. Shout out to Carrie. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not going to lie. When you said that at first, I was like, Carrie's Kitchen. I've lived here my entire <laughs> life, and I've never been there. I think it was like a, a new Chinese food place. But uh, shout out to Carrie, your billet mom. Yep. Uh, one more question before we let you get out of here. Uh do you have another year coming back and playing juniors, or what is the plan for moving forward after this season? Um, yeah, this is my last year. I age out. I'm a 20 year old, so I honestly I don't know what I want to do yet. Go to college possibly, or just join the workforce. So I got some decisions to make. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Hopefully, some big impacts uh, being made over the next couple of weeks. A deep playoff run here with the Bulls, and uh, see what the future holds for Mr. Tanner Glassroot. Yep, sounds good to me. Best of luck to you. Well, yeah, thanks thank for you. stopping by. Bulls fans, don't go anywhere. We've got another big third period coming up. And again, some word from backstage. I'll let you know there's not a really backstage here. We're just kind of <laughs> feeding these things to you. But we're going to have a little bit of overtime. We've got two more guests coming up. Don't go anywhere. It's the Around the Horns podcast. Bulls fans, welcome back. Third period time here on the official podcast of the Pueblo Bulls, the Around the Horns podcast. Joining us now, uh, Gavin Andres. Gavin, thanks for taking some time. Welcome into the podcast. No problem. Anytime. Uh, for Bulls fans, Andres, a last name the team is very uh, used to hearing, um, but a new face as well. You get to play with your brother Wyatt this year, and you uh, have made a big impact here with the Bulls already. Uh, talk about playing on this team and, and how much you've enjoyed it so far. Well, it's great to be back playing with my brother again. It's like <laughs> growing up, playing high school. Yeah. all over again and it's an amazing community here and it's just something special to be a part of yeah something special sitting atop your division uh, obviously watching from afar last year seeing how competitive the team was and how deep of a playoff run they could have made now this you're looking to do the same yourself uh what was that jump to this team like i know it's kind of one of those things you're you're keeping track of seeing how they're doing and now you're you're living it uh, yeah. Was that a pretty quick adjustment for you? Yeah, it was really quick. Um, in like August, I wasn't sure what was going on with COVID and everything. And then I got was available to come here, and I was just really grateful to step in and be a part of the team. And so how much friendly competition, if it's always friendly, is there between <laughs> you and Wyatt? Uh, there's always competition, and it's just fun kind of messing with them. <laughs> 
<laughs> so now, the last few weeks, uh, you've been trying to get back to 100%. Yeah. How are we looking for uh, this coming week? Uh, no, I won't be able to play this weekend, no. but okay. the goal is to be 100% for playoffs. and. That's got to be a little bit frustrating, though, right? Yeah. You want to be on the ice for sure, I'm sure. Yeah, it's frustrating the my last junior year being out like last month, but playoffs is when it counts, and that's when we're going to make it matter. And that's what I'll ask you about next is you're going to hopefully be back and, and get to play meaningful games as well because not only are the coaches that have fallen out, but the, the people they're connected with going to be tuning in uh, the games on hockey TV, if not – uh, by springtime, back in the stands, possibly. So you're going to be uh, playing for your future career as well, knowing that it's the last 8, 10, 12, 15 games that you could be playing. Uh, what are you trying to prove to folks? What are you trying to accomplish personally? I'm just trying to focus on all the little details, play the game how it's meant to be played, and just be smart, try to win every battle I can. And is there a goal for you? Is it to, to go on and play college hockey at the next level, to go and play uh, at another league? What is it for you? Uh, to play college hockey. Is That's always been my goal and dream growing up. This close, is it like you can smell it? You're already trying yeah, to buy the books and, and get there and do it? Yeah, it's really exciting applying to colleges and just being so close. <laughs> well, that, now that you're here in the public community, and mm -hmm. you've, you, your brother's been here, you're here, um, I'm sure you've been around all over town. <laughs> and you got to sample some some good some good eats. We always want to yeah. know where's your favorite place to eat here in Pueblo. We've tried a lot of places, but definitely my favorite is Bingo Burger. Can't go wrong with a milkshake and a juicy burger. Is there a particular burger there that you like? Uh, the Blocks is always it's what I usually go to. That's a good one. He yeah. gets it. Yeah. You just get it. Sometimes we bring folks <laughs> on that don't get it, and you can't go wrong with a, a proud sponsor of the Pueblo Bulls either. Never. Uh, now we gotta, bingo burger. Yeah, I was gonna say, now we got to give them the little bit of a plug there. Hook us mm -hmm. up. Yeah. <laughs> Become the official sponsor of our stomachs. Uh, i got to ask you, too, a uh, lot of scoring potential on the team this year, and I know it's tough sometimes to get the puck spread around all over the place, but it seems like no matter what line you're looking at, no matter what combination of guys are on the ice at any given time, somebody is there to make the perfect feed, and, and no matter whose stick it touches – it's always got the chance of going, uh, you know, finding itself in the back of the net. Is that a good feeling? Is there some some urgency as well as you know that if you're not the guy to score, anyone around you is going to do it? Yeah, it's really exciting because you know every single shift is going to be exciting. You're going to have chances to score because any guy on our team can put the puck in the net. Uh, is there a particular pairing you want to be out there on the ice with most times? Is there a pairing you like to be on the ice with somewhere you feel like you thrive the most? Uh, well, it's going to be hard to say this, but I don't mind having my brother out there too. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I uh, have to put up with him, but I'm used to playing with him, and it's easy to read off him. Yeah, and the defender that's trying to just match the face is like, I think I've got this guy, but... <laughs> yeah. Don't switch a room. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, we also like to ask folks, uh, from a team standpoint, I know there's friendly competition that goes on all the time, uh, who may be the fastest skater on the team, who's got the quickest blades out there, uh, and who's got the best hands? Oh, man, Benny's a good player. He's fast, he's got great hands, and... I don't know. He's just every single day in practice, he's always flying around the ice and can be good with the puck, too. <laughs> so two for one, Benny on both? Yeah, I'd have to say. Oh, man, that's, yeah. that's the first. He is good. Yeah. Yeah. He's fun to watch. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and it's also got to be good to, uh, I'll ask you about some of the accolades of your teammates, because these are guys that become friends pretty quickly, uh, and especially with some of the circumstance you guys have faced this year with long road trips and then being, uh, you know, almost quarantined when you're not on the road and you're trying to be safe and stick around the guys you know the most. Uh, you've got guys that have already signed on to play next year. Uh, Kale Lone, a guy that's committed to play college hockey next year. You've got two guys that just collected their 100th point uh, a weekend ago. Mm -hmm. What is it like to see the success around these guys? You've got to feel good for these teammates of yours. Yeah, it's like super proud to like be with them every single day, and everyone's just getting so close and get hitting milestones. It's fun to be a part of. Any milestones you want to accomplish before the end of the year? <sighs> get the ring. Get the ring. You heard it here first. That's a that's a trend though. Everyone's been talking about getting their ring. That's mm -hmm. what you're here for, and yeah, we're we're here for it too. <laughs> So we, we'd love to see you guys do that, for sure. Yeah, we would also like it if you sported it on your left pinky and just walked around <laughs> town and made people bow to it like yeah. the uh, godfather. I don't know. <laughs> just a thought. Something to think about. It is Pueblo. It, it is. is. 
Yeah, if you're not going to uh, stab somebody like Mario said, you gotta <laughs> get him with the pinky ring. I promise we are nonviolent here on the podcast. Uh, Gavin, I just wanted to uh, thank you, uh, congratulate you on what you've accomplished at this point, wish you a speedy recovery, and hope you get back on the ice to uh, wrap up the season with the ring. Thank you. It's great being here. Thanks for everything. Thanks for the Bulls fans that have been sticking around. As we promised, we're coming back with a little bit of extra OT, extra ice time on the podcast this weekend. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Bulls fans, welcome back. Overtime here on the podcast this week, a jam-packed show, wall-to-wall. Uh, but now we're bringing you a, a guest that we've seen a couple of times on the show, uh, David Nelson joining us again. Dave, welcome in. Hey, thanks guys for having me. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank Tara for coming on and, and supporting us and, and everything uh, Sangre does, uh, being a sponsor of ours. So it's awesome to have her on here and, and appreciate the kind words. Yeah, definitely like that. Hopefully uh, on the podcast here, we'll get some more insight from sponsors moving yeah, forward. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, David, I got a start on the sour note and ask sure. about the the weekend that had just passed obviously uh, we talked a little bit before the weekend about the new look Provo team that was going to be coming in and knowing it was a new coach some new players and they added some additional pedigree and you guys kind of had to witness that firsthand yeah yeah I think uh, obviously for us you know in our, our preparation for the week we, we understood that uh, again it's a clean slate uh, here at the second half of the year and, and a new coach new players new systems you know all the above and obviously you know the end of the day you got to tip your hat to uh, a good hockey team that came ready to play and, and executed uh, you know every single night I think for us uh, it was a bit of a wake-up call um, you know we, we uh, prepare every week uh, as far as you know being in first place teams are coming for us they're hungry they want to beat us they want to take on down the top team and and uh, you know for us I, I think uh, that was going into that week and that's the only team we hadn't lost to in the division so um, maybe a little bit of uh, uh, un, unpreparedness as far as uh, thinking these these guys are going to actually come in and do what you know we expected them to do and uh but again at the end of the day you got to tip your hat to a, a good hockey team and, and they came in and, and played really good hockey beat us three straight and and uh, for us it's get back to work this week and, and basically peel back the layers and get ready for uh, a big weekend here against ogden and to be fair really that provo team was a completely retooled yeah. team for you guys not like who you saw before when you played no so no that that you know, scouting report has certainly changed quite a bit from uh, the last encounter. So, I mean, I think that, sure, they're coming after you, but, you know, trying to figure out who they are and what their identity is, is, you know, part of what happened this week. No, yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, when you, when you look back at, at the start of the year, obviously every team in our division has changed. They've added players. Uh, players have, have gone to different teams, you know, whatever uh, uh, place you want to call that. But uh, for, for Provo, um, you know, they're finding their identity right now too, right? They're, they're bringing in guys here, uh, new coaching staff, new players weekly. Um, and so they're kind of, you know, mixing and changing lines so when you bring up like uh, the scouting report again you can can try to figure out their systems as what they did last weekend but uh, when you add a player to that that changes your systems too so um, for us we, we knew it was just going to be a, a grind obviously we have a handful of guys that uh, that would be in our lineup weren't in our lineup due to injury and but uh, that, that's not an excuse you got to have uh, like a touched on during the the weekend the, the next man up mentality and and so um, again you know tip your hat to them and and you take the loss Losses and, and you learn from them and, and just try to, uh, you know, get better as, as we prepare for the end of the year here. And I'll take your high point out of that one and turn it into our first question moving forward. It had to have felt good, though, knowing that uh, even though some of the guys had fallen ill or, or had their injuries take them out of the lineup, uh, that next man up mentality really got to highlight some of the skill that is on uh, second, third, fourth lines coming off of the bench as well. So it, was there a guy that stuck out to you this weekend? Was there a particular line or just a, you know maybe a couple of things you saw this weekend really gave you some hope? Yeah, no, I think uh, for us, uh, at the end of the day, we, you know, again, you look at the game, right? You end up losing every game. That That's something that uh, we want to learn from and, and uh, minimize our mistakes, take advantage of our opportunities when you break it all down systematically. But uh, I think when you look at our group and, and the next man up mentality, we still had three lines. We still played four lines, six defensemen. We played uh, uh, both goalies this weekend. And, and so the depth part of it, you know, we're very happy and and 
being able to interchange and, and have different lineups. And, and I think for us, uh, it was a different look looking at uh, the different variations we can have at the forward end, the D end. And again, when you have uh, great goalies back there and, and Dougie and, and Blakey and you go down the list with uh, Houston and or Teach, you know, whoever's in, we, we believe, you know, we have an opportunity to win. And so, um, again, looking at it, you know, no one wants to lose three straight and, and get swept, but uh, you learn from them, you grow from your mistakes. And, and again, you just touched on taking, you know, positives out of it. We have depth. So for us, uh, we, we didn't try to, you know, I guess steer too far away from what's made us successful. We believe we have, you know, 20 guys in lineup that can win a hockey game. And uh, when you look at the, the breakdown of it, uh, obviously every game, uh, at some point uh, late in the game, it was out of out of reach to, to find a way to get back but uh, um, you know we have 20 guys that we believe can win hockey games in battle and I think the other part is uh, um, you know they face a little bit of adversity so now we can take another challenge here this next week and see how we bounce back and, and that can be another positive point we look at. And what have you seen this week in practice or have you implemented some things in practice this week to kind of damper that feeling and knowing that you don't need to overcorrect everything because aside from this weekend series, you guys have been a really darn good team. Yeah, on the ice. yeah. No, I think, uh, you know what, uh, um, we're, we're very transparent with our players as far as our expectation and, and you know, not trying to get you know, steer too far off of the road. But uh, Tuesday was a tough day. It was a battle day. It was a grind. It was a long practice. And I think they knew that was coming, right? Obviously, I don't think they were happy with the overall performance of, of you know, individually or as a team, you know, again, losing three straight. But uh, um, for us, you touched on it. We have been a good hockey team. We, we've stuck to what's worked for us. And, and at the end of the day, you know, effort works for us. You know, we come into Tuesday practice and you grind it out. You understand, you know, mentally and physically it's going to be challenging. We step into Wednesday and, and grow and go into our system work and prepare for the, the next team coming in. And ultimately, you know, we want to dictate the game, right? So uh, for us, it's just about dialing in our system, what works for us, what doesn't work for us, figuring out, you know, the little plays that, uh, again, we believe put ourselves and players in the best position position to succeed and, and be successful and um, but again at the end of the day now you have a little bit of a chip on your shoulder coming in and you have things to prove uh, again not only on the individual basis but to our division and to the league if you look at it uh, from the point standing it, it's anybody's uh, anybody's uh, you know first place to take at the end of the year so um, we understand there's there's not much of a wiggle room and, and we need to come ready to go on Friday. You know as you look at the uh, the point standing as well you guys have played many more games mm -hmm. than the rest of the teams that's got to be prov you know providing you guys an edge with preparation and ready to move forward into the next you know uh, playoff push. yeah yeah no absolutely I think uh, again for us uh, we always try to be a, a week ahead in, in preparedness and, and readiness but uh, when you look at it right um, you know Jerry and Lori from the beginning of of you know, things challenging with COVID, they, they made a promise not only to our organization, but the players and, and the community that we're going to play hockey games. We're going to find a way to do it. Right now we're sitting at, at the most games played in the division and I believe the league and, and we're proud of that. Um, but again, uh, looking at it, we got 12 games left in the regular season. So if we do our job, we dictate our own destiny, right? We don't want to be sitting there one of the off weekends where we're not playing, watching the scoreboard and saying, oh, we need this team to win or we need this team to lose, whatever. We just don't want to worry about it. We want to go take a, a can take care of our business, handle what we can control, and uh, you know win hockey games, and, and by the end of the year, just be in first place and, and playing playoff games at home. Yeah, and we had the chance to talk with Jerry. He said he made the commitment 52 games that you would have uh, completed that by the end of the year. Yeah. And if so, that, that'll be the most games played across the North America. Between Canadian yeah. and uh, juniors here in the U.S., you guys have uh, played the most games. So it, it's got to be a good feeling. And also knowing from the developmental standpoint that the guys that are coming back are going to have a, a tough, hardened season under mm -hmm. their belt and know what they're getting into. Uh, but you're also going to see these guys really push over the next 12 games, uh, knowing that this is their launching point uh, to that next point. How do you get those guys either um, excited for that, bought into it, but also focused on the task at hand? Yeah, I think for us, uh, again, um, everybody faces a challenge with COVID and, and our preparation, whether it's uh, just different day-to-day -day tasks, right? But uh, for us, too, uh, we, we have you know a, a group of guys that probably half of them were with us last year, bought into coming into year two and, and having the end goal of winning national championship and, and putting a ring on your finger. And then you, you add veteran pieces down the line, like Gavin, like Tanner, Mikey Power, Brig Newhold, Doug Wakeland, you know, these guys that have played at this level or a level above. And, um, 
this is the last hurrah. So I think it, it's easy for them to, to come and, and, you know, put the work in, understand what the, the task at hand is and, and not only hold themselves, but each other and, and teammates accountable. And, and you know, we, we've said it from the get go. Um, you know, junior hockey is a challenge. You know, you start with a group of 25 guys. It's probably not going to be your 25 guys at the end of the year. And so um, you're going to kind of uh, find the guys that are here for the right reasons and here for the wrong reasons. And when you have guys, again, go top to bottom of our, our roster, but uh, are here for the right reasons, they want to compete every day. They want to get better. They want to have the next challenge of, of getting to college and they want to win hockey games. Yep. They take care of business themselves, right? So they, they kind of get to uh, uh, weed the players out throughout the year that don't really want to put that extra effort in, the effort, you know, the extra workout, the extra time off the ice, on the ice after practice, whatever the case may be. Um, but again, it, it's just, uh, you know, we have a, a great deal of 20-year-olds that uh, this is your last hurrah, right? So if you don't show up, if you don't block that shot, you don't, you know, take advantage of that scoring opportunity, that could be it and, and we could be going home. So um, again, we're just trying to remind these guys every day that in the year of COVID, uh, be grateful for what, you know, being able to walk into a rink, being able to put on your skates, shoot some pucks and, and, you know, be around 25 guys that are your brothers. And, uh, you know, it goes by quick. We only got 12 games left and, you know, it just feels like they were just showing up for camp uh, in September, you know, yesterday. So, um, again, I think uh, to answer your question, you know, they handle a lot of that and, and figure out, uh, you know, what it takes to bring every day. And, and, you know, again, at the end of the year, the task at hand. Well, 12 games left to finish up some business, get a ring on the finger of 25 motivated guys. David Nelson, again, for taking some time out of your schedule. I thank you for it. Yeah, no, thank you guys uh, for everything you do and look forward to a great weekend. To the Bulls fans, down after last weekend, fear not, just a few more hours and you'll have a, a fresh slate of Bulls hockey coming your way. Still no fan allowance at the moment, but being uh, able to tune in a hockey TV gets you the front I guess front row access to uh, some of the best hitting hockey in the league uh, and if not stick around and watch the official podcast of the Pueblo Bulls the Around the Horns podcast every uh, single weekend for the entire crew here we appreciate you sticking around